uh, Delphine is from France. She's feeling very self-conscious, so please be nice to her. Um, anyway, so mo I imagine most of you are here because you're fans of comic books and graphic novels and and uh, children's books, of course. Uh, this can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Okay. So as you know. Uh, this year is being celebrated as the year of the Indian children's book. Uh, we have seven new publishing imprints that have opened in the last nine months. It's a very exciting time to be a child. There's some wonderful books coming out. And we are very lucky to have two such wonderful and talented illustrators with us. Now, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> sorry. You're going uh, you don't have to look at me. Okay, don't worry. Uh, um, I thought we could start briefly by talking about, uh, most of us here don't realize what a rich world of illustration there is in, in Europe, particularly in France. Uh, France is the second largest market for, um, for illustrated books and comic books uh, after Japan. Uh, yes, I think so. I <laughs> believe so. Uh, I'm just going to say these strange things and mm -hmm. You're welcome to disagree with me. <laughs> yes, but uh, I don't know if for the market, but I, I know there is a lot of children's so books and comics. Absolutely. For and comics for children and adults. Mm. All comics. Yeah, yeah. And I think in India, most of us have grown up with some of these wonderful books. There's been Tintin, Asterix, um, all the various things associated with that. Uh, Black Sad, which is from Spain, which is quite wonderful. Um, so I thought I'd just start by asking you, how and when did you decide to become illustrators, and and what inspired you to choose such a such an interesting profession? Eva, would you like to start? Yeah, please. words <laughs> of your journey. Uh, well, I decided to start an illustrator, actually after my university studies, I think. But I always loved drawing. Uh, I always loved to draw, probably with almost every child, I guess. It's just that I think that some of us, at some point, uh, just stopped doing it, and I couldn't. <laughs> I just keep doing it more and more. And when I arrived at the point that I had to decide which I want to be when, I, when I'm a grown-up, uh, I know that it has, to do, it has to be something that it has something to do with drawing. So I wanted to keep drawing as much as I could. And I decided to study fine arts, uh, but basically focused on animation first. And uh, I also like comic books, but I start to know a bit more about comic books uh, later. And you named Black Sad, and that was one of my first, uh, <laughs> I don't know, myths, because I loved so much uh, the drawing of Juanjo Guarnido, and also the stories, it's like polysiac uh, comic books. But mostly it was the films, animation films, that they captured me when I was a child, and also the child books that I read. Uh, we were talking with Delphine that probably the first books that we read or that parents uh, tell us to us, it's the first inspiration probably. And all these things make me to want to keep drawing and after that I started studying illustration in Barcelona as well. And then uh, it was there definitely when I knew about this whole world, a huge world actually of uh, children illustration and I just can't go out of it because well, it's uh, a magic world, actually, and you have the opportunity to do magic <laughs> in there, so. Hi, I'm, I'm the 
Delphine <laughs> Rona. Uh, I, I'm an illustrator for children's books. And I think, uh, like Eva, it begins for me when I, when I was a child. And, and I loved to draw, as I think each child in the world, each child draws, but uh, when he grows, he stops drawing. And I never stopped drawing, I liked it. And I always copy the books I liked. I, I, if I read a book, I like it and I copy the drawing. And uh, I liked also um, look inside all the, the pictures in the children's books. And after that, I make I study graphism and illustrations. And my when I began uh, my working as an adult, <laughs> I was graphist for ten years. But one one moment I remember I wanted to draw, <laughs> so I came back to the to, to the draw drawing to drawing, and I I wanted to tell a story with pictures, and for children's book uh, we can uh, have a lot of imagination, put a lot of imagination inside, and I think it's really good. And my inspiration are comics, French comics, uh, children books, and also animation, uh, f film animation, uh, Japan ones, a Japanese one, Miyazaki. I don't know if you know. And um, and all all what I see everywhere. When I have the time, I draw what I what I can see in the street or everywhere. And I notice in my brain and remember it when I want to draw something. I like trees and nature and I like to look everything. I try to remember and put it in my pictures. Out of all the work that you've published so far, uh, could you tell us about which you feel is your favorite personally? And could you tell us a little about it? My favorite book uh, yeah. of my uh, of yours. production? Um, I, I, I love all of them, but um, my favorite is the first one. I, I edit. I have it here. I have it's a story of a crocodile, a crocodile. And he has a lot of um, animals who are coming on his back and they talk together. And the crocodile is quiet, doesn't move, and always more and more and more animals on his back. And they play, and the crocodile doesn't move. <laughs> and they, tell, they told to the crocodile, come, come, come to play with us, come to play with us, and they manage and the crocodile doesn't move and at the end he moves to go and play and every all animals go in the air and it's a, it's a good end but we don't know because after the end there is a little picture and we see the crocodile face he has he has he has he has in his mouth uh, the hat of one of the animals. So we don't know if he has hit <laughs> the animal or not. Each can choose the, the end of the, of the book. And this book, it's the first, uh, it's my favorite because I like the story and, and, and it was not a common. We work with uh, the author of the text together and we didn't know if we will find somebody who who want to edit the book. So we have knock 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 <laughs> all the editors, and somebody says yes. It was a really good uh, good news. <laughs> First one. <laughs> the well, yeah, in my case, it's difficult to pick a favorite one. First one is always a special, of course, 
So my first first book was one uh, which was published just for a tiny publisher in Catalonia, where I'm from. Uh, I don't know if it uh, exists or already. I mean, uh, if it still exists. And it was due to a contest in my illustration school. And each, every year they made a contest in uh, the illustration school and another school of writers, kind of. And they selected one of the illustrators and one of the students for writing. And the prize was to publish a book. So I was lucky enough to, to get this chance. And it was fantastic. It was like a, like a grant because you had the chance to, to learn how actually do a book with the help of our teachers, of course. And I'm so grateful for that. It was such a great experience. And I had there the best teacher, which I already uh, have contact with. And it's, well, it's a friend. And uh, I'm very, very grateful to that. And I have a, a very good memory of that book. Have you ever heard of a concept called remaindering? Remaindering. So remaindering is when your publisher calls you and tells you that nobody's buying your book. So we're going to pulp it and we're going to print a better book on it, on that paper. So my first book, I was very excited. It was this deal where I got mentioned in about eight news. I was 19 years old, moderately intelligent. And seven months after it came out, I got a call from my publisher saying we're remaindering your book. And uh, it was the best thing that ever happened to me because there are no copies of that book in existence. Well, there's one. I own it. No one will ever read it. But um, I think if you find the right partner, the right person who encourages, um, I think that's very important because you mentioned working with a writer. You know, uh, you work with writers too. I, I work with illustrators, actually. The last comic I wrote was with an Argentine who I've never met a gentleman called Enrique Alcatena. Uh, you know, so I've never met him. Uh, communication has been only on the internet. But if you find the right person and it clicks well, I think that is magic, right? I'm, so the next question I'd love, if you could just talk about your process. That, I mean, how do you guys, you know, how does it work for you? Because for a writer, my, my experience is, as someone who writes comic books or writes books or children's books, is very different. But I'd love to know how it is from your side. Uh, have you ever wanted to murder the writer? Uh, because he's getting on your nerves. Uh, I mean, how does it? Why don't you tell us your process? Um, I can tell about process, but there is uh, each book, each of my book, I a uh, different process. For the, this one, several, we work with an author, and we go and ask for, uh, to an editor if, if you want to publish our book. So we work together and we, everything, uh, we put the, like a wall, we put one, what do you say, brick, brick after, one brick after and one brick, and we change one brick. <laughs> we talk, now that, br that brick is not good, change it and we can. Sometimes we can say with the author, uh, uh, don't tell that in the text, I will tell that in the picture. It's not, it's really interesting working like that. And sometimes uh, I never talk to the author. An editor call and tell me, you, want, uh, you like this text? Do you want to make picture for the, this text? I say yes and never talk to the author sometimes. Um, it, it's different kind of. Well, sometimes author uh, has an idea really um, pre precise of what he wants in the pictures, and it's a little difficult because it, it, it tells do that and do that and do that. And I say, but I am I want to <laughs> do what what I imagine. So sometimes. It so the, the editor, which is, um, how do you say, chef d'orchestre? How do you say, chef d'orchestre? Orchestre? Orchestre? 
the editor is manage uh, the yeah the conductor of the orchestra yeah yes and so they make us to talk better together yes Yeah, I actually would say the same because each book is actually different and it comes usually from different ways. In my case, I have like, um, um, technically I have a process that I follow, but this first part where, we, where, where you discuss uh, which scenes or which not you want, it's always editor who makes like the, inter it's the intermediate between writers and um, illustrators. In my case, I think it has always been like that. Maybe in, in a few cases I have worked directly with the writer, but it's because uh, in that case it was a personal project and we did it without any um, expectations. I mean, the expectation is that it could become a book, but we didn't have any publisher or any editor, so we have just the, the well, our ideas, what we wanted, we made a, a mock-up. I'm sorry. We did a mock-up and then we tried to sell it. But as we were friends and we understand each other, uh, it was easy actually. Sometimes can happen totally different and uh, why editors are there are to deal with, with this, to, mm -hmm. to manage uh, everyone's work and to avoid that, I don't know, you want to kill the writer or the writer wants to... Yes. No, no, <laughs> that's the no. thing, it's because I think always writers or, or illustrators, we have our ideas in mm. mind. And sometimes if you don't know each other, it cannot match. So you need someone who maybe yes. knows better how mm. to decide these kind of things. No? Yes. And I, I forgot to talk about an uh, important step. Uh, it's uh, because before the illustration, we make a sketch, sketches for all the book just with paper, uh, pen, paper, pen. And uh, all the sketches, we show the sketches to the editor and the, in the author. So uh, at this step, we can talk together. If the author or the editor wants to change something, who needs to change something, or I don't know, we can talk at this step and after. Um, could you tell us a little about what you're working on now? Uh, we'd love to hear about that from both of you. Yeah. Ah, true. <laughs> I don't know if you can, can see the images very well. I just brought some images of some of the last projects I've been working on to show you a very uh, very briefly, the process. Um, well, first, I I work with characters. Well, this is from the last book. Uh, it was lunch. It was just today, and we did it in Bukaru Festival. Uh, and it's published in India. It's my first book, <laughs> very first book published in here, with Pickle Your Books. And well, for me, a very very important part in each book are the characters, because. I don't know what happens in film, but in my head it works a bit like thinking as if it was a film. So you know light, you know, you have composition, photography, but of course you have actors and actresses. So characters has to be the actors and actresses who has to tell the story. And I think that I always love that, or love to think that people could believe that they are real for a, for a moment. So to try to achieve that, I first have to achieve that they are believable for me. So I had to do, as Delphine says, lots of sketches first of the characters, different positions, until I find the ones that, I don't know, move me some way. So here you have, uh, this is for a different book. First I, I do these doodles that just me understands because there are very simple sketches to decide composition and to decide sequency because in book, in children picture books or picture books, you also have uh, you also have this mm, this sequencing or narrative 
thing. So it's not just about one illustration, it's about what you tell through a bunch of illustrations, put, uh, put it all together, like a, like a story, like in a comic, probably. I think so. So you have first to discuss this connection and this sequency, and uh, after that I made uh, sometimes bigger sketches, like this, and then the final illustration. Or this for another picture book for uh, smaller ones. This is not published yet, actually, it's finished, but it's going to be published. So it's in the process of printing, and uh, it's going to be there <laughs> in a, when it's published in Spanish. It will be published in Spain. And here I, I was showing the, this process of sequencing, and in here the same. I have the final image in here, and on this side, I don't know if, if you could see, but there are small sketches. Uh, of the scene, of the previous scene and the next scene. So I first do this left part, and then once it's agreed with the editor that it works, I start with the final one. Really? No, I know. It's, it's difficult uh, to... too much ambient light. Yeah, there is too much light. Sorry, it's difficult. But, but well, there are like very simple sketches, but just to show that I work like that, probably, as you were talking before, with, with little squares that shows the, the spreads of the book. And that is the probably most important thing to, you have to work with editors. That was to show, uh, well, we, we cannot see it very well, but for me, a tricky part now is working with color. Uh, so I try in some of the books that the topic and everything guides me to there. I try to experiment also a bit more color and I brought some references. Or here to show that references can be also life experience, like the things you see as Delphine says, nature you have around, the landscapes you are used to, maybe something that you have in your head and you are not even conscious, like colors, can appear in the illustrations. This is a house of my town, where I'm from, and then uh, for a project I used it, and here it's the house of a cuckoo. I don't remember the name in English for that, a bird who... Well, I could do the, <laughs> the onomatopoeias or the sound of the bird, but there is no need, it's a bird. <laughs> it's one. And that's it. That's, uh... Well, uh, Delphine, would you like to talk about what you're working on? Mm, yes, if you want. I, I have nothing to show. Um, that's okay. Yeah, just a book, if, so, if you want to look at books after... The but uh, actually, I, I work with uh, an author. We work before for a book, and sometimes we mm, send mails just to have news or something else. And one day, she was very uh, sad because uh, she has flowers on, on in front of his window. And uh, how do you say limas? Un limas? Un limas? Ouais. One is cargo. Escargo is snail. Snail? Snail. 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 Oh, something like escargo, but he has no the... Um, no shell. No shell. Only the... the ah. Snack? Snack. So she was sad because the snail crunched all the leaves of her flowers. And she sent me the photo and she was so, so sad. And <laughs> I tell her, so write something about that and she write a story and i and now uh, the editor is uh, is okay to publish the story and i read that story but it's a beautiful story the uh, the snail, snail um, is in the on the leaves and he's sad because he looks at butterflies and he think i'm not beautiful and i on the on the floor and I'm nothing and they are so beautiful and they can fly and everything and he's very sad and see crunch 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 of the f flowers um, and sudden and she, he sleeps and suddenly butterflies comes and they so see he draws he he was drawing many beautiful things and with a crunchy, so it's a little, 
every, and um, butterfly say, but you can't say, you can do that. It's, it's, we cannot do that, and you can do that. It's great. So it's strange. beautiful story. <laughs> That's the book I draw act for the moment. Well, I'm sure all of us are looking forward to reading both these books. Um, would anyone like to ask our panelists some questions? Yes? Um, let's get you a mic. Just a, could we give her a mic, please? So uh, my question is that now with the coming of digital painting and Procreate and all those things, uh, how do you go about that entire transition? Do you still make uh, sketches from hand and then paint them? Because those will always have flaws, like a watercolor sketch or an illustration will have a flaw. But is the market going more towards wanting a digital illustration? Sorry. With all the new technology that's available now, I mean, both of you have very classical yes. approaches to, yes. I mean, some of your watercolor work is absolutely marvelous. Every, and, everything. Uh, I think yeah. Delphine's yes. work, I mentioned Mo the Moomin stuff, yes. which it reminds me of. But, but some are you hostile to technology? Is it something that you're willing to work with? I worked, I worked with the computer for illustration but one day I realized I don't want to work with the computer. I want to have the paper, the, the matter, and everything. And so we, are, we have very beautiful colors with pencil, and we can imagine all. Just, just a little thing about the book I, I draw now, because it's interesting to challenge. I, I thought I just put three colors in that book. So I chose a yellow, green, and pink. And all the book is just three colors. It's funny sometimes to challenge or, or something. But no computer. Hmm. Well, for, for me as well, in my case, I never worked uh, digitally. I mean, I have to scan the drawings, of course. But it's not, I mean, I, I'm more clumsy definitely uh, digitally because I'm always doing it by hand. So I would need a lot of practice to, to do it right with the computer. But I think I don't do it because I, I really enjoy doing it la that way. And I not, don't think it's something bad to do it digitally. I mean, there is people and illustrators who does an amazing work and it's completely digital. But I think they are different. I don't think that one substitutes another one, mm. but they are different tools. And, and I think your head works different with one yes. and another. Yes. For starting, yes, when you work digitally, usually, I don't know for sure because I don't work every day with that. But what I think you have is that the sense that you always can, you always can do the control Z. Mm. And when you are doing it manually, you always have that partially part of risk, mm -hmm. you always can do it again, mm -hmm. but you yes. <laughs> work yes. with the time. And that kind of risk, I think it makes you work a bit differently mm -hmm. with, with the paper and the things you are working on. Yes. Like a different kind mm -hmm. of compromise or mm -hmm. a, a different feeling. Yes. But, but, but it's just a choice, it's nothing but else. I think, do you think it's a tool for constru construction of the image? May I use, uh, uh, for me I use computer to construction, I make a stretch, sketch, I scan it, and I can zoom for uh, yes. one part or, or turn one part and make the composition. I use a computer for that part, and after I draw with my work pens. I don't and know. And definitely it has more practical, mm. I mean, it's more practical for this kind of yeah. things, but even this, yes. I like to yeah. <laughs> do it manually yeah. but don't know it's because i'm used to it mm -hmm. but sure most people working on illustration or i don't know if most people but lots of my colleagues work some part of the illustration by digitally or, or just for this mm -hmm. for having very quickly different options and that's mm -hmm. very practical that's mm -hmm. true 
but I don't know, for me it works well to do it like this. I feel that I'm, I'm even faster doing it like this than yeah. with computer, but maybe I should just uh, yes. try, of course, because but there is no time. <laughs> sometimes in the sketch I have something, it's good, but I want it like just here. And I, I, then, then I trace that it. Is when I, I am happy with the draw, but I want it to be there. So I use a computer just to. It's, I mean, I, I work like in ancient times a mm -hmm. bit. I, I work with a light table and I trace it sometimes mm -hmm. similar way. I like this part, but I like it a bit uh, on the left or on the right. And I work a lot with quick sketches and then final one is. And sometimes I have to repeat it. Well, I still write on a typewriter <laughs> and it's getting more and more difficult to find the ribbons because <laughs> technically they don't make typewriters in India anymore. Mm. No, the last typewriter in India was made in February. Mm. So uh, I have 23 typewriters. Yes. They're all in a row yes. and I like to write different chapters mm. on different mm. typewriters. Mm. But I'm a little strange. Mm. Uh, this handsome young man wants to ask you a question. Have you ever illustrated any other type of book except for picture books? Uh, I, no, no, I didn't. Uh, well, in my case, I mostly illustrate, yes, I mean, in editorial, in books, regarding books, I have illustrated picture books and also novels, these novels with illustrations as well, and covers, sometimes you just do the, the cover of the book. And then, besides poster, I besides books, some posters or uh, I don't know. Once uh, I did, I did the illustration for a um, for a label of a for a for a design uh, company, a label on a bottle. There is many places actually where you can apply illustration. Hi. What medium do you use? Is it uh, colors on paper or canvas? What's the medium that you adapt to? Both of you. Me, uh, pencil, color pencils and, and paper. And a very thin, um, what is it? Foot? Pin, pin, pen, pin pencil, no, pencil. pen pencil, very thin black pin pencil to do the around and after uh, color pencil, pen, color pen, sorry? How do you frame? How do you maintain your uh, drawings? Because you're do it in, doing it on with pencil, it can fade away. Also. I use I, I think if I understand like, the question, I'm not sure. I use a tool which uh, co which we call a, a light table. Okay. Light table. So you are, it's a table with a glass, and at the, under the glass, a light. Oh. Last and facing. I put the sketch okay. and I put my paper and I can no, but I after see the sketch doing so after doing the drawing how do you save it you uh, sandwich between the glasses after I don't know she's asking like how do you retain it for a longer duration of time so that you can use it later on or something like that Ah, oh, okay. It, it's not um, a painting. It's pens. So it's the same. Uh, I am. Um, it's the same pen. I, I don't. The color is the same. No, no, I, I when my uh, Im, um, my picture is finished, I give to the editor, and he send it to the photographer and scan it. It's 
can. Let's can. Who inspired you to make illustrations as your career? C'est quoi? Je n'ai pas compris. Qui inspire? Qui inspire you? Oh. Tell us about your favorite children's books that inspired you. The last one? The first. The first. The first. When I went. I don't remember. Uh, I remember one of them. I I had se I remember several, but I remember uh, one. I don't remember the title, but the story was about an um, elephant who, who who was pink with dots, yellow dots. And I remember that. I don't. I don't. Yeah, perhaps. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. But in France, you cannot find this book anymore. No. But I have it. I have my book, my <laughs> book for children in my home. But I don't remember the title. I will look when I go back. <laughs> uh, in my case, it happens the same. I don't have like a specific book from one. I, I have the. In my head, the characters from from many of them, not the pictures, yeah. not yeah, especially picture. good. What you would say, very good uh, books. I don't know, but there were characters that trapped me for something. One that I remember now. It was uh, I don't remember the title as well, and it's not famous at all. But it was a collection about one character, which was a. a I I don't know the name for that. The this kind of. Little rats with uh, with uh, with needles as a unaris unarizo. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was the main character, and different adventures happened to him or to her. It was a a female one, and that was one of the first. But probably in my case, the mo the most important inspiration would be the, the films that I looked when I was a child. And then later, uh, it w there were novels and there were comic books, as this one black set one was one of my first uh, comic books that I loved, but it was later. I don't know if you've ever, it's the only comic book that's ever won the Pulitzer Prize. Uh, when you're about 15, you should read it. And you have a favorite book? What? Which is? Dog Diaries. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? So, yeah, I wanted to ask you, um, were you acquainted with any Indian illustrators before coming here? Before. Yeah, I mean, now I guess that you, do, now, yes. you did some research uh, mm -hmm. when you were invited here. But were you were you uh, were you um, uh, acquainted, or did you know of any? And if not, then I guess this no. question is for Arjun. I mean, who would you, for a European um, reader or or just reader, common reader, which illustrators would you would you recommend uh, for us to get a bit yeah. into the uh, into Indian illustration? In my case, I, I didn't have any idea or uh, an, a specific illustrator from, from here that I knew first, so it's true. Not that I have in mind. Actually, it's been a very good year for Indian illustrators. We have an Indian gentleman called Mukesh Singh, who is uh, he's, he's working on the INCAL in, in France yes. with Jean Giraud mm. Mobius. Mm. So oh, yes. and mm. uh, he's doing very well. He's, mm. His work is stupendous. Um, we now have an Indian who's drawing Batman. Um, there's a lady called Devaki Niyogi from Bangalore who is drawing Archie. Uh, you know, she's fantastic. You, and, and she's self-taught. She's never been to school. Um, she actually started drawing about nine years ago. Uh, we have Amruta. 
who <laughs> is doing a panel as we speak with uh, Devdat Patnayak. Um, there's a marvelous, marvelous, and I would say the finest, the, the two finest illustrators in India right now are also writers. And uh, one of them is called George Mathen, Apu Pain, uh, who's stupendous uh, in, in terms of pure imagination. Uh, it's, it's work which is dazzling. Um, there's also a, 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 a young man called Sumit Kumar, who uh, uh, is working with Image Comics in America now, and who also illustrates. Mm. And um, actually, it's a very interesting time to, to be working with, yes. with sequential art yes. in India. We now have uh, a horrible comic convention, the Comic-Con, which has been taken over by the New York Comic-Con. It's terrible. There are four people there drawing comics. The rest are all selling you Thor and Marvel merchandise. Um, but we have a thing called the Indie Comic-Con, which is next week. Um, and you'll see some stupendously exciting work which people are doing in their house. Uh, the problem is that uh, publishers are reluctant to touch. It's an expensive, it's a very expensive medium. Uh, we're hoping it'll change. Um, uh, children's books this year, I don't know if any of you have heard of Venita Coelho. Um, there's a lady from Goa called Venita Coelho who has actually won the Hindu children's book prize two years in a row back to back. So there's some very exciting writing coming out of India. Uh, in fact, you should buy all my books. They're not very good, but you should buy them. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's exciting because Indians are finally starting to go global. And uh, I think you'll see over the next five years, uh, you'll see some, uh, it's been a very good year for us overall. In, um, we had four Indians nominated for the Edgar Award for the best mystery in the world. Uh, I was lucky enough to be one of them. Um, we have seven Indians nominated for a Nebula, which is the, the best science fiction award you're going to see in the world. So there's a lot of exciting stuff happening. But uh, in India, we tend to wait until things become famous before we, we read them. So hopefully that will change. Any, sorry, back. Any more questions? I hope that answered your question. Yeah? Sort of. Any other questions? Uh, have you ever illustrated any comic books and which were your favorite comic books? If I have illustrated one comic book, you ask. And if I have any favorite right now. Uh, illustrated, no. In my case, I've never illustrated, but I would love to. Uh, I think I, I'm not... I have not been brave enough until now because it's a lot of uh, a lot of work and uh, I would love to do like a personal project and in a comic format and try to sell it but I haven't done it yet and favorite one pff, pff, very difficult don't know this this one's of Laxa of Juanjo Guarnido it's an Spanish one and uh, it was probably my first favorite one but now uh, well, there are other Spanish ones that I like, uh, like uh, Pablo Auladell, which is an author from there, and it, he's doing graphic novel, and, and for me it's amazing work, but there are pff, lots of them. I don't know, a French one, as again, now I can't remember the name. Well, I, there, I have a lot, I don't know. These two, probably. And uh, yes. which, comic would, uh, which comic book would you like to illustrate? Oh. Uh, I mean, with the story, with uh, which topic? <laughs> it's done. It's, it's impossible to, <laughs> to do it again. No, a new one, a new story. Maybe uh, Alice in Wonderland, but format graphic novel or, or comic book would be classics, but in that format. But classics are also already done, so something new, new story. <laughs> In? Maybe. Why not? <laughs> he said uh, Alice in Wonderland in the space. <laughs> um, I've never drawn for comics and it's difficult to, to talk about one comic, comic I prefer. I, I, I cannot really answer. 
I love the work of of uh, Neil Strata, who make comics. Uh, his name is Brecht Evans. You know Brecht Evans? I think she. I think he is um, Belgium or something. But I don't like the stories, but I like his his work uh, picture. But I I can't know. I cannot answer. That's too much comics to choose one. Um, so I was supposed to talk about the history of Indian comic books, but uh, we don't have a lot of time. I can talk about it if you guys would like to, or would you rather speak to uh, our wonderful guests? Do you have a question? Okay, so uh, can we have a round of applause for Delphine and for Eva, who have been absolutely charming and you must go get their books and uh, I'm going to talk about Indian comics for a bit um, and there's also a, a talk at 6.30 if you guys want to stay around which is about uh, an Indian graphic novel. Okay, so um, do we have enough time for me to talk about the next ones at 5.30? Yes, so can I have 15 minutes? Okay, so I'm going to just take over. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Delphi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I just need a minute to plug in my pen drive so I can show you some of the images. I, are you staying or are you?